I think it puts them in a pretty good position to get in. As far as decks, again, we're coming in after sideboards here. It's Is It Control in the hands of Jan. Miguel is playing Sultai Ultimatum, deck that was more popular in the other gauntlet. Yeah, and, and a deck that's had a rough weekend. Look, I, when I think of Sultai Ultimatum, I think first of its winning ways over the course of much of 2021, but I also think of just the brutal day that Javier Dominguez had yesterday with the strategy. Um, he just had a rough go of it. A great first day, of course, but a really rough go of it. And it seems like a lot of people really built their deck in mind with beating this strategy and not losing to the very powerful Emergent Ultimatum. So we'll see if Miguel is able to string together a, uh, a couple of wins here in this match. But as you already said, Marshall, already down a game. Yeah, that's going to be really tough, but we're going to see if he can scrap back here. You can see he's got a hand of Maze, Mind, Tome, Duress, Cultivate, Omen, Disdainful Stroke, and a couple of lands. And this is a matchup I imagine that Jan feels pretty good in. Um, you know, there's going to be this this back and forth once again. I feel like this is a broken record at this point of players looking to, you know, get their mana online because we're going to see a Cultivate Resolve right now and, you know, basically manipulation and then fire off the big spells. So, you know, this game or potentially games coming up here, uh, I think are going to be a little bit longer in nature as these players just kind of get their foundation set. That's right. Speaking of, here's a duress for... Miguel, this will give him some good information about what's going on on the other side of the table. And there's quite a bit. Omen of the Sea, Prismari Command, Expressive Iteration, and Juari Disruption to go with a land. As far as stakes goes for our players, the uh, Jan with a victory is going to lock up top eight. So this is one yeah. game away from that from Jan. Miguel really needs to pick up a win here to stay in the conversation. Looks like we're going to see an omen of the scene response to this maze mind tone. We did see earlier that Jan does have a null in his deck. And looks like, did he actually find another one? Well, okay. <laughs> Ooh, hello, and a big smile there from Miguel. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I got the, I got that covered. Here's maze mind tome number two. It's This one's actually going to hit the battlefield, though. You know, it looks like everybody's. It's a Maze Mind Tome party right now. This card, I just remember when it was previewed, and people like, "Man, this card's gonna be really, really good." And it is a really good card, but you're seeing it more of a more of a sideboard asset more than anything. Uh, and mm -hmm. so now both these players are gonna have access to this card. It looks like, and they're gonna be able to do the whole, "All right, I'll draw, you draw, I'll draw, you draw." You know, basically refill our hands because both players are down to two cards and urines that have not been added to their hand yet via the companion. Ooh, and it looks like some aggressive scrying happening here from Miguel, who likes what he sees. There's an emergent ultimatum on the top. Now, he's not there as far as mana goes, only has five at the moment. But, he, you know, he life goals, right? He wants to have something to aim for here. So he's going to keep that on top, put it into his hand. There's a land. Okay, so rarely do we see this, Marshall, but we are actually seeing something that I don't see a ton of when we watch uh, when we watch Salty Ultimatum play, which is, the mana for the ultimatum not really cooperating right now. You see, Miguel does nice. have six mana, Oops. six mana on the battlefield, but only a single source of green mana right now. So, actually, is two mana away from being able to cast an attempt to resolve the incredibly powerful ultimatum. Right, and no green mana in sight here either. That was, mm -hmm. you know, keep a land or get a land off of the tome, and uh, and Miguel, boy, I mean, this could be. A lot of turns, and that's not a green mana source, and this Emergent Ultimatum is going to get stuck in hand for a long time at this point. And you saw a little bit of a reaction there, too, with the draw of that Clearwater Pathway going like, come on, what's going on here, deck? So Maze Mind Tone's going to draw a card, looking for a little help here, but this is pretty rare. Fable Bingo. Passage, that's a step in the right direction. That'll get you a green source. Now you just need one more. See, that was huge, right? Because now... <laughs> Right now, you're very, very live to be able to put a merchant ultimatum on the stack in the next couple of turns here. Without a green source this turn, that was really looking too slow. Yeah, so we changed things up a little bit here. Now, this expressive iteration, hopefully we can get a good look at this. This should be an important one here for Jan, who has a disdainful stroke and not much else. This saw it coming. It's another hard counter. Hard counters are something that he's definitely interested in. The one thing that he is currently missing is just some way to actually put a little pressure onto Miguel. So 
setting up those reactive elements to be able to stop the very powerful namesake card of this deck resolving just doesn't have any way to really kill Miguel just yet. Okay, there's that second green mana source. Ooh, and a duress mm -hmm. off the top of the library here for Miguel. It wasn't a green mana source, but this is going to give him a lot of information and take away a hard counter to potentially clear the way for the emergent ultimatum down the line. He's got some work to do here, though, with the saw it coming and the disdainful stroke, the disruption, uh, not going to get the job done here. So it's just a matter of which counter do you want to take. And the only real consideration is, you know, mana, right? Like you could take saw it coming which is a hard counter for anything but it does cost three versus only two for the um for stroke for disdainful stroke yeah looks like we're gonna go to big bird now is it worth trying to counter this i feel like it is okay so now what you're seeing here is miguel is basically using hearing as a as a test spell where he's basically like if it resolves cool if it doesn't resolve also cool if it resolves it gets to blink my maze mind tome and i get to keep doing that if it doesn't, that's one less counter spell I have to care about for Emergent Ultimatum, assuming I peel the green source that I'm missing. Got two two cracks at it here. Can crack the tome and then uh, take the draw step here and see if he can find a green source. The, the interesting question is, would you go for it if you did find the green source? Because you have a good amount of information about Jan's hand. You know three of the five cards, but there are, t there are two unknowns. Well, if I knew that uh, Jan drew Test of Talents and would counter <laughs> my Emergent Ultimatum and then the rest Ooh. of my Ultimatums, maybe Ooh, I wouldn't go Coma? for it. But Coma? Oh, a that's a juicy peach. Okay. That one's not going to get countered, and it's castable. Yes, it is. So triple green, no, but double green, double blue, yes. And look, he just got a pretty good look at what's going on in Jan's hand and knows that, hey, I'm pretty sure I'm clear for takeoff here with this powerful Serpent. And we're going to go for it. I love it. Coma Cosmo Serpent goes on the stack. And take a look at the hand for Jan. Uh, <laughs> not a lot of ways to deal with a 6-6. Six, six, and you have nope. a very short window to do so. Because once the Serpents show up, it becomes nearly impossible. And this is one of the things that you kind of talked about uh, in the last match that you and I covered when we watched Jan, right? Where he was playing against Goldspan Dragons, and his deck is really good at preventing Goldspan Dragon from actually hitting the battlefield. But once it's actually on the battlefield, because he's blue and red, he has some significant difficulty with getting Goldspan off the battlefield. And that's how he lost his match uh, to Matty Quizma. And we're kind of seeing the same thing here once again, which is, you know, I'm pretty good at, like, preventing things from resolving with the counter spells, right? I got Strokes, Test of Talent, uh, Saw it Coming, all this other stuff. Well, Coma really makes things difficult because not only is it uncounterable, but once it actually gets on the battlefield, Jan doesn't have access to black removal like a Heartless Act or, you know, any of the black removal spells that would actually kill Coma before it starts making serpents. I mean, look at the spike field hazard that was just drawn. That's more than inadequate to Laughable. get this thing off. Yeah, it's, it's, it's horrible to try to get this thing off the battlefield. And once Coma's here, I'm not really sure what the plan is to go about beating it if you're Jan. We're seeing pure desperation here from Jan, Mor from Jan Miracle as he digs through his library, even cycling a Shark Typhoon for zero just to try to find some way to interact with Coma. And it looks like the window has closed on that. As I mean, you, Coma, see, you see that you see the body language change now. You know, Jan's pretty laid back and everything. Now it's now it's face on fist, which you know I've been there. I'm actually doing it right now. Uh, you know, it's it's un, it's uncomfortable, as uncomfortable as facing a coma is, because you're just like I I can't do it. Yeah, he's just gonna concede, like he can't do anything. Literally he just, he can't, do anything. can't. There are two mind flayers in the sideboard for Jan. I don't know if they came in, um, but even even then they would have been too late most likely there as you know those serpents add up so so quickly and you have to end up dealing with all of them it's not like you know <laughs> it's not like if if you finally do find a, a way to deal with coma you know even temporarily those serpents do good work too yeah you know i, I it was just looking at that game and how that game was shaping up initially right we were talking about the lack of green sources for immersion ultimatum which i'm sure jan was thinking we saw miguel were kind of respond to uh with his frustration and not being able to do that but as we know man it takes one draw step in this game sometimes and all of a sudden it's not 
I'm looking for the third green source. It's, ooh, I found Coma. I guess I can win the game now because I know my opponent has some extreme difficulty beating this card, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I'm curious to see how these duresses play out as well. We saw them be pretty pretty good uh, in, in the last game there as they, you know, they, they mattered for sure, right? Taking yeah. away counter spells to clear it out. But ultimately, it was kind of interesting because it's almost like you would rather have your opponent have a handful of counters if, if you're going for the coma game plan anyway. And Yon just doesn't have a whole lot of great ways uh, in, in the 75 to deal with it. Here's Bone yeah. Crusher Giant. Now, one way you can do this, Cedric, is to pull the, the old Cedric Phillips approach here and just start bashing. Get him dead. Yeah. Get him dead. You can draw as many cards as you want. Scry up and down and all around. I don't care. I'm just going right. to kill you. Because you know, these really important cards cost seven mana, right? Yeah. And, you know, that's a lot of time to get somebody dead. It's a little tough if you're... Uh, switching your deck into this like heavy counter spell based control deck, but maybe it's a thing. Well, killing your opponent before they can cast their spells is my favorite form of card advantage. Indeed, you have seven every cards. card trapped in their hand is is like cards going into yours, right? That's right. If you have seven cards at the end of the game and you're at zero, I'm feeling great about things. Yeah, that's so. a seven for one for old CP. I, I like right. that. <laughs> All right, is it time for a duress? One interesting thing is there's a pair of Field of Ruin there as well for Jan, and all three basics plus a Cultivate in hand uh, for Miguel. It could be an issue, you know, coming down the line here. I mean, this could be a major issue. I mean, Miguel's hand, if this game were playing out like the last game was, where Jan was setting up with Expressive Iterations and Omen of the Season, Maze Mind Tomes, you'd be feeling really good about this, but you're staring down a Bone Crusher Giant. Now it looks like a Shark Typhoon's. 2-2 is going to be on the way. And I think Miguel's hand in normal circumstances is quite good. You've got Cultivate, you got a little counter magic, some threats to play towards, all that other stuff. But given how this particular game is shaping up, I don't think his hand is that great because now your follow-up is you got to probably play the Seagate Restoration onto the battlefield untapped. That's pay three life, resolve a Cultivate. And then hope that Elder Gargaroth is good. Hope that Pelucranos resolves uh, while you're being pressured. And if those things don't resolve or not impactful, this game's going to end before it even gets started here for Miguel. Yeah, this is one of those draws here from Jan. Uh, he's got the Phoenix, uh, Phoenix of Ash, and on t uh, you know, and that's he can add to the board that he's already got six power on with Miguel down to sixteen. This is a much different look here in game number three than we saw from game number two from Jan, as he is very much taking the reins and being the aggressor. And look at Miguel. He is deep in the tank. He's got that John Finkel, Huey Jensen kind of hand on the head. I'm going to have to think this out right now mode. And ultimately, he's going to fire off the duress. Ugh, awkward. You know, and you and you got to take the disdainful stroke there. Um, you know, you're priced into it because you know that your play is basically, I'm going to play Seagate Reborn. Yeah, I'm going to pay three. I don't want to. I'm going to fall down to 13. I'm going to cultivate looking to resolve Elder Gargaroth the next turn and hoping that you brick off on finding a counter spell or any way to deal with it. So we fall down at 13. The attack's going to be for six. So let's just call it in, uh, that Miguel's at seven right now. And if Jan is able to draw something like a disdainful stroke or saw it coming, going to need another blue source or an essence scatter, which I think he just put on top of his deck. Yeah, he did. This one might just be a wrap right now, Marshall. Wow. What? A game here for Merkel so far. The real question is, can Miguel come back? He has generated a mana advantage thanks to that Cultivate. He also has a copy of Pelucranos in hand that he could use to maybe mitigate, uh, you know, some of the attacks or, or the board as it's coming. He needs time. That Essence Scatter is effectively going to buy Jan an entire turn here. Two mana for your five. And, you know, the time when that really matters is when you're bashing. And that's exactly what's happening here from Jan. Let's not forget, he also has Maze Mind Tome going, so there will be more cards. He has an extra red source now so that he can actually put lethal on the battlefield. I mean, if Miguel taps out, it's over. Yeah, so what Miguel can do this turn, and this is why he's in the tank, right, is he can say, do I think you actually drew the right card? Because you scribed with Maze Mind Tome to the top, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're keeping a card on the top of your deck when you could have put it on the bottom of your deck, it's something that's relevant here, which is probably a counter spell. So I can play Elder Gargaroth and cross my fingers that you didn't draw the right card, or I can play Pelucranos Unchained with Negate up to counter whatever card you kept on top of your deck. So here's Pelucranos. Here's going to be the Essence Scatter. And he made the right play here to Miguel of, I'm not going to go for Elder Gargaroth and cross my fingers that you left like some weird card on top of your deck. I think it's something that I can negate. I'm correct. So I'll play the 6-6 and hope that this can stabilize the battlefield because currently, 
course, this trumps the Bone Crusher Giant that's on the battlefield. Doesn't handle the shark immediately, but as far as stabilizing that 4-3, you're doing okay. Wow, this is really close now. Because that Pelucranos can just chew up those flyers as they come down if Miguel gets to untap. But as it stands, we could easily see Phoenix of Ash plus a Shark Bash for four down to three. And that is getting right onto life support here for Miguel. Now, a main phase home of this C is going to allow Jan to get as much information as possible here before making a decision. And these are two good cards to be looking at here, Shark Typhoon and Bone Crusher Giant. And I'm not even going to call it Bone Crusher Giant right now, Marshall. I'm going to call it Stomp because call I that think that's stomp. what it's going to be here uh, in this game. It's so close. It's still not quite enough, even in conjunction with the two attackers in the air and the Stomp. That equals six, but it puts immense pressure on Miguel and really leaves him not a lot of ways to wiggle out of this. I'm also curious to see if the Bone Crusher Giant attacks here because, you know, getting a bunch of counters off of Pelucranos does have some utility at this point. And there it is. It is going to attack as well. It's a really, really good point by you. And I think that's a great attack by Jan, getting those four counters off of the Pelucranos. Now your follow-up looks like it's going to be a stomp here. Okay, so we don't see the Phoenix this turn. Yeah, maybe a little surprised by that. I guess the thought process here is oh. if I play... If I play Phoenix, right, and you peel off, they're, they're an going to emergent be ultimatum. Yeah, you peel off emergent ultimatum. I'm just yeah. dead. So I've got I've got mystical dispute at the ready to counter emergent ultimatum if you're running good in that regard. So I like yeah. this setup here even more. Now here's the well, we're gonna tap for it ourselves. Here's the big fella. Okay, there it is. Elder so, Gargaroth or Bust here for Miguel. So you could play Phoenix right now. But that doesn't really get you anywhere. So here's Omen of the Sea. Now we got to go looking for a little bit of help because Gargaroth can stabilize and turn this game around incredibly quickly. So another Omen of the Sea here for Jan. Oh, man. <laughs> look at look at Miguel. He is praying to the oh, Elder Gargaroth oh. gods. <laughs> oh, burning hands found with Omen of the Sea is enough to get it out of the way. And unfortunately for Miguel, the Elder Gargaroth giveth and taketh away. This is the cleanest answer in standard for it right here out of red. Burning hands does just enough to kill it. And that clears the way for an attack for two. That means Omen of the Sea can hit the battlefield here. But it is absolute desperation now for Miguel. Right. Disruption. Neither of those are particularly good. Disruption is an easy one to put to the bottom. I think binding is too. So mystery card coming now and the follow-up. Power word kill. All right. So power word. Okay. So that's, I mean, that's, that's fine, right? That so you go binding. The token. Yeah. So you go, let's see. I want to make sure I got this right, right? You go binding the token, PWK, the, the Phoenix of Ash, right? Yeah. The, the real worry now is, is the Bone Crusher Giant that yep. could come down here for Jan? Because once it's on the battlefield, it's real hard to get off the battlefield without taking two damage. Okay, so he's hanging in here, and you've got the ability right now to be able to play Power Word Kill, and I believe... Oh, Steve but take a look at the top power. of the library for Jan. Oh, the very powerful Prismari Command. There's actually an Anul just hanging out in the grip, so you could you can't actually fight back against this, so that's going to counter the enchantment. Oh. A null doing serious work here, but really that Prismari command is lethal as it does two damage to the head, even through a power word kill on the shark token. Miguel threw everything he had at Yawn, and it really did take every single piece of, uh, of resources here for Yawn, but he was able to capitalize off of that early start by piling on a bunch of damage and now finishing the job, and Jan Merkel is into the top eight here with an eighth victory. That should lock him up, Cedric.